NBC News has confirmed that the committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol has obtained text messages that show conservative activist Ginny Thomas, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, repeatedly pressing then-Trump White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows to fight to overturn the election. Copies of 29 text messages were obtained by the Washington Post. NBC News has not reviewed those texts. The first message was a link to a video from a far-right conspiracy theorist that claimed Trump watermarked ballots as part of an effort to catch fraud. In the message, she texted, <clears throat> I hope this is true. Never heard anything like this before, or even a hint of it. Possible, she asked. She went on to quote a passage that circulated on far-right websites about the, quote, Biden crime family and ballot fraud co-conspirators being arrested and, quote, will be lying in barges off Gitmo to face, living in barges off Gitmo to face military tribunals for sedition. My God. According to the Post, on November 6th, she followed up, encouraging Mark Meadows, quote, do not concede. It takes time for the army who is gathering for his back. This is crazy. On November 10th, after news organizations had declared Joe Biden the projected winner, Thomas reportedly texted Meadows, help this great President, stand firm, Mark. You are the leader with him who is standing for America's constitutional governance at the precipice. The majority knows Biden and the left is attempting the greatest heist of our history. And Willie, painfully, there is much more. Yeah, this is really extraordinary stuff from Bob Woodward and Bob Costa. The Post reports Thomas also pushed Meadows to work closely with Sidney Powell, one of the lawyers who promoted conspiracy theories to help Trump overturn the election. Even when Donald Trump began to distance himself from Powell, Thomas stood by her, reportedly texting Mark Meadows on November 13th, quote, don't let her and your assets be marginalized. Instead, help her be the lead and the face. The next day, Thomas sent Meadows a text that she said was from Congressman Louis Gohmert's chief of staff, writing this, quote, mm. the most important thing you can realize right now is that there are no rules in war. This war is psychological, psyop, she wrote. In a November 24th message to Thomas, the Post says Meadows responded this way, quote, this is a fight of good versus evil. Evil always looks like the victor until the king of kings triumphs. Do not grow weary in well-doing. The fight continues. I have staked my career on it. That's from Mark Meadows back to Ginny Thomas. Thomas responds this way. Thank you. Needed that. This plus a conversation with my best friend just now. I will try to keep holding on. America is worth it. It's unclear who exactly Thomas was referring to as her best friend, but previous reports say Thomas and her husband refer to each other in that regard and have done so publicly. Justice Thomas is not directly referenced in any of the messages, and Mrs. Thomas has said in the past she and her husband are not involved in each other's work. However, Clarence Thomas was the only justice, we'll remind you, who voted against the National Archives handing over President Trump's presidential records, which include these text messages to the January 6th committee and he dissented when the Supreme Court rejected Trump's bogus election challenges. NBC News has reached out to the attorney for Mark Meadows and to Ginny Thomas for comments. So Joe, a lot to digest there. Obviously the key question is does Ginny Thomas speak for or represent the thinking of Justice Clarence Thomas, who made those decisions, who recused himself in that other case? But this is true, forgive me, quack stuff that she's pushing out there and suggesting that Sidney Powell, perhaps the lead quack, run this operation. Well, and I must say, spending a good deal of my adult life in the conservative community in Washington, D.C., uh, this is one of the most disturbing things I've read. I can't believe I'm saying this through the entire Trump presidency and what we found out after the Trump presidency for three reasons. First of all, uh, spouses uh, do their own work. They can do whatever they, they, they want to do. Uh, Clarence Thomas does not tell his wife what to do and vice versa. We can make that assumption. But Jenny Thomas on her own, on her own, has, has been a, a pillar 
of Washington, D.C.'s conservative community. She's revered. She's celebrated. The, 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 the who's who of Washington, D.C. looks upon this woman as a leader of the conservative movement. It tells you how deeply corrupted and intellectually flawed that movement became through the Trump years. Jenny Thomas, I must say on a personal note, when I knew her serving in the House of Representatives, she was always an apologist for the, the Republican establishment. She always carried the water for the Republican establishment, and she has maintained those ties throughout her time in Washington, D.C. So Jenny Thomas is a representative of where the Republican Party has gone over the past 25, 30 years. That's frightening enough, reading these text messages. Secondly, you have the chief of staff of the president of the United States actually actually summoning the name of Jesus Christ. Think about the hmm. sickness of this. He summons the name of Jesus Christ for his help in overturning American democracy. Now, you could you could call it what you want to call it, uh, but 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 if you're trying to 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 throw out a presidential election because you lost, that's over that's overthrowing American democracy. And he says he will make it the fight of his life with the help of Jesus Christ to overturn American democracy. They, okay, so see, here's the thing about Mark when he was trying to undermine American democracy. He said, this is a fight of good versus evil. But as a friend of mine said after reading the story last night, he's right, it was a fight between good and evil. He just got the jerseys mixed up. He was not on the side of good. Using Jesus Christ's name to spread lies, to spread conspiracy theories, I'm telling you, that's a level of sickness I never thought I would see from my old party. And the third thing, that is, yes, it is shocking about this, that Clarence Thomas, when he had a case that came before him that he knew his wife would be associated with, didn't recuse himself. He was the lone dissenter to stop these text messages from coming out. And, and we've been told, by the way, that Clarence Thomas is in good health, that he's going to be fine, that he's recovered from treatment, and we are very grateful for that, and we look forward to him coming back on the court sometime very soon. What he did here, shocking. Any judge, you, you know what he said before where he said uh, the, the, the work of spouses can be separated out and should be separated out. Uh, they, they, they're independent actors, except when they're not. And here, this is where their work comes together. And, and, and I will say, Jonathan Lemire, the fact that Clarence Thomas did not recuse himself, the fact that the president's chief of staff after a presidential election that everybody knows he lost, including Mark Meadows. Everybody knows he lost, including Mark Meadows. He says he's going to make it the fight of his life with the help of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, to overturn American democracy. This is really, really sick stuff. And it really does show just the depths to which these people were willing to go to try to, to, to try to attack American democracy and throw out what Donald Trump's own people said was the cleanest presidential election in American history. Yeah, you'd think we'd be beyond surprise at this point, but this was a jaw-dropping story when it broke last night. And a lot of Democrats that I talked to, aides to members of Congress, suggested, like, could this be something where Clarence Thomas be impeached or at least be have face an inquiry about this. There's only been one Supreme Court justice ever impeached before in the history of the United States. We should mention Tom is still hospitalized for an infection. There is belief that he will recover, the Supreme Court says, uh, but it's not clear when he will resume his duties physically on the bench. Uh, but this is something also we should remember that Mark Meadows, there's a criminal referral for Mark Meadows from the January 6th committee because of his refusal to cooperate with that investigation. So a lot of people looking at the Department of Justice to see where that could 
could go. But this shows in such stark detail uh, the efforts to overturn the election and the delusion that had gripped uh, the Trump White House and some of its closest allies to try to uh, compare this effort to uh, the, admit the work of Jesus Christ and to call it the work of good versus evil and to show that it will stop at nothing. This, these texts all come from the window right after the election. Uh, and we know that the fever only intensified within the West Wing as uh, Trump, so many staffers left and Trump was only left there with his loyalists, uh, in, including Rudy Giuliani, Sidney Powell, who kind of came in and out of favor. Uh, and Mark Meadows was there throughout. And they stopped at nothing in efforts to try to overturn this election. We should also mention Ginny Thomas has admitted she was at President Trump's rally on the ellipse yeah. the morning of January 6th. She said she did not go on to the Capitol ahead of the riot, but she was right there in every possible effort to overturn this election, the wife of the sitting Supreme Court justice. Yeah, and let me just say, are Democrats talking about impeachment or are people talking about crimes coming out of this? Just take a deep breath. What we've learned is justice will not be served when it comes to Donald Trump. It just won't. I don't know why. I don't know why the Justice Department won't walk through that door and actually hold him accountable. I don't know what happened in, in Manhattan. I, under, I, I sure know that the prosecutors, and we didn't report about this because, well, we've got a war going on. We're on the verge of World War III, but you have a prosecutor who quit the case up in Manhattan because he said what we all know. We all know this, too. Donald Trump's guilty of multiple crimes. Now, if you're out there writing columns saying that this is a witch hunt, you don't know Donald Trump. Donald Trump hyperinflated the value of his assets his entire life. He lied to banks about it, is the testimony. He lied, to, he lied to everybody about it. Has long been the opinion of everybody that's ever known him or been around him. And it seems that the facts bear that out. Certainly the prosecutor thought that, but guess what? Once again, Donald Trump escapes justice. So, so if you're sitting here reading this story thinking that actually justice will be served against these people who tried to overthrow American democracy, we found out that this Justice Department is not interested in doing that. We found out Merrick Garland's not interested in serving up justice because somebody somewhere might think, oh, my God, there's a political angle to this. Are you kidding me? This after that guy that's on the screen right now spent four years trying to break down the wall between the White House and the Justice Department, the White House and the FBI, the White House and the Intel services. And now we have an attorney general that won't even bring charges when crimes are committed. We have a we, we, we have a DA in in Manhattan that won't even bring charges when his own prosecutors who have been on this case a long time said he's committed multiple crimes. It's just not gonna happen. In this case, Mika, it's not gonna happen either. And that's all a very long prelude to say this. Even if no charges are ever brought even if there's no disciplinary actions ever taken in this case. This Woodward story uh, and Costa story, these texts, these exchanges serve as the most damning indictment against the Trump White House that we have seen so far. And Mark Meadows makes it very clear that he is going to use the shield of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a, what a righteous man to overturn American democracy and prosecutors. I don't know if intent still matters at the Justice Department, but if it does, he says in his text that the mission of his life will be overturning a fair and free democratic American election. Let Wonderful. that sink in for a second, guys, gals, and tell me whether there's intent there to subvert American democracy. Well, we know how this story's going to end. Everybody's going to walk. The bad guys always get away in the Trump administration. They will here as well. It's just, it's unfortunately, the whole American belief that no man is above the law. That doesn't apply to Donald Trump. We don't know why. It just doesn't. But again, this story in and of itself, Mika, yeah. these texts, they indict all of them as un-American, 
unpatriotic seditioners. End of story. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.